Hey everybody, welcome to No Scrubs, the video cast that's here to talk to you about all things recruiting and talent acquisition. I am Dawn Burke and I'm a contributor at Fistful of Talent and No Scrubs is brought to you by our friends at Jobvite. That's J-O-B-V-I-T-E. So today's topic is burnout. Burnout. Um, so before we get into the meat of our topic of burnout, let's get our guest up and running. Our guest today is John Nicolasian. How are you, John? Hello from Miami. Hello. Wonderful. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well. Um, I'm actually recording from my home office. You can see I've got my Beatles poster over there. Very nice. It says let it be, which probably helps with burnout some. Um, and uh, yeah, it's raining here. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. How about you? What's going on in, is, um, in Miami? In, <laughs> in the 305, uh, Mr. Mr. Worldwide is telling us that it's air you can wear. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. I'm totally stealing that. That's great. Um, so, so John, uh, again, one other thing I got to throw out before we have you introduce yourself. Um, your last name uh, is is a, an awesome one. So why don't you uh, talk? Where's that name from? Spell about sure. a little bit of it. Uh, it starts with an N. It starts with an N, Y, and a K. Um, families originally many, many, many generations ago from the Ukraine. Okay. So, uh, well, I'll yeah. tell you, my uh, maiden name is Herdlika, and it's H. R D L. So Slovakian, we're like, yeah. me yeah. and you can probably make beats better than no other. <laughs> you think? <laughs> okay, so let's get that down to it. So talk, talk to the people about who you are, what you do, where you're working. Sure. So uh, I work for the College of Business Career Management Services Office at Florida International University. Wow. If I use the big, I know, right? Uh, FIU is the big state school down here in South Florida. Okay. Uh, we are north of 55,000 students, and the College of Business has 10,000 students, um, 8,000 undergrad, 2,000 grad. I'm okay. rounding up for brevity's sake. Sure, sure. Uh, um, my team, and we don't have a very large team, but my team is responsible for taking students through the entire career development process and preparing them to enter the world of work where they won't be scrubs. Oh, like, right. <laughs> right. That's good. For sure. Uh, <laughs> so we take students through, what do I want to be? How do I write a resume? What do I do? Uh, how do I do a case interview? How do I interview? What do I wear? Okay, good. Our office is full service. And we do this for undergraduates and graduates um, and executives. So, so let me ask you this. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole a little bit, but I'm certain we have a lot of recruiters uh, who are hiring, hiring uh, folks who are, are new grads. At FIU, are, do students have to go through your services at some time before they graduate? Or is it one of those where, hey, they just pop in at the very end? Or talk to us a little bit about uh, at what point do you guys get engaged? So we've actually, we're on the cutting edge now. My team, this is, I'm so proud of this, and thank you for that, that softball. Oh, good. Um, we are working on putting career education as early in the student's um, experience in college than ever before. Yeah. You know, seven years ago, we weren't doing this. Um, we are now in the very generic, uh, everyone has to take a generic business class. I'm going to bore you with the class numbers, but... We've incorporated resumes, interviews, and um, you know how to find a job online, and, all these, and pieces of technology at the very first business class that students take. That's great. And we're starting to track and trend awareness of this. Oh, business. that's great. So uh, it, it's a hell of a lot of fun. And that's a lot of work. No, I, well, I'm sure. I, I'll tell you, when I graduated from college, um, I did not even know the Career Planning and Placement Center uh, existed until the only way I could pick up my cap and gown was by getting like the resume disc. Yep. Um, so bravo. That's great that it's, that's come so far. So let's start talking a little bit about burnout. And so I'd love to get your perspective. And we're going to talk about the post that I wrote a few weeks ago. Certainly you're going to bring some perspective of not only as a person who is in talent, the talent business about the burnout of burnout you might face or your team, but certainly students as well. So uh, ultimately, uh, guests of No Scrubs, uh, the article is called Suddenly 
channeling Britney Spears tips to control burnout. And ultimately the premise is, is I, I have found in my experience talking with people and in my own personal experience that burnout's becoming very, very prevalent. I mean, I know, um, uh, Arianne Huffington, I think that's something she's championing right now as far as that's concerned. Um, but it's tipped into, uh, a, a territory that it's not so much, uh, about, Hey, you're just not saying no enough or you need to delegate better. It really is now the workforce is to a point where there's nothing to say no to. Um, there's just periods where you're going to have weeks, months, dare I say a year, years where there's, there's just a too much to do. So the, the post talks about that a little bit. Have you John ever experienced one of those, um, kind of iterations within your career oh yeah no and i actually can see one i've got a month like that coming up in september right right, like, right. Two, like i can see it on the calendar coming um yes the short answer is yes sure um, but we're not in the business of short answers um we i've seen it because we're balancing and, and i and i think this is an interesting concept we balance multiple calendars okay so and I like to, I, I mean, we've known each other. I look at things, I try to look at things a little differently. The, this calendar concept, we've got our personal calendar. We've okay. got our, our child's academic calendar. They may yes. not be aligned with them. We've got our business calendar. Mm -hmm. um, our clients have their own calendars. We've got a fiscal calendar. Throw oh, that yeah. in there if you, you know, tomorrow is fiscal year end for us. Right, right. So, right. You know, so, you tend to do a lot of this juggling and then, yeah, it's so a lot of calendar, I think calendar management becomes, you know, you, it's easy to get in the weeds with that. And then you're, oh my God, I've got to manage this. I've got to manage that. And then slowly there's no time or space for you. There's no time or space. And you don't even realize you've been going through this ping pong for six months. I mean, you don't realize that it starts to kind of chip away at your, your well-being. So, so let me share with you what a couple of my signs of burnout are. And I'd love to hear a couple of yours as well. Sure. Um, one's going to be that my memory just, shoo, memory shot. It's gone. I mean, it's just gone. Um, to where my husband had some serious con concerns when I said the, asked him the same question four times in about a 20-minute span. Um, another thing is I get, I get really into ponytails. I mean, it's just like, um, So I'm looking kind of like, not so great. And I don't care. So that's, yeah. the, that's the next one. And... Um, I think more importantly, when you talk about uh, we're in the, the business of interacting and listening to people and engaging people, um, frankly, I start getting real snappy, um, which doesn't help the cause. And it's not because I'm angry. It's because my brain's going so fast. I'm just putting, giving out quick answers. Rest assured, yeah. though, it certainly doesn't build up relationships. Um, do you have any uh, signs of burnout? Yeah, I, I think um, for me, my wife, I'm, I'm kind of the exact. Well, not, I would say the exact opposite. I can't do a ponytail. <laughs> so. You could buy one of those new um, wig man buns. No. They're there. <laughs> okay. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. I, I will, um, I, I get a little bit more quiet. I, I get a little bit more reserved. I fall into the, I just don't talk to people. I too get a little short. Sure. Um, but it, I think in the nature of our business, because we are, in talent and recruiting and we're in the business of other people's business um we you know it takes a toll on us yes. so you 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 find that if you can't solve their problems they become your problems or right. you know you get you you start collecting these monkeys or these little snails or whatever right iteration you want to use and you can't get rid of them and so then it just creeps into your personal life and it creeps into your professional, it creeps from your professional to your personal. And then our spouses are looking at us like, Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So it really does become then uh, a family issue or as some might say a family disease, like yeah. they say on intervention, it's family disease, yeah. right? So you need an intervention. Sometimes actually that's a solve. You need a, a hard reset. Um, so I, I think one thing when I've researched about burnout, uh, John, is that, uh, and I hope this is something that was really enlightening to me, and I hope it is enlightening with the audience. Um, there really does seem to be um, kind of four very distinct and predictable phases of burnout. It starts with, hey, I'm just uh, kind of physically run down. Um, the more it goes through and nothing changes, uh, a lot of people start to feel ashamed. 
Like, why can't I get, get things under control? They start to have doubt about their abilities. Um, next is going to be you start getting really cynical. Now, why isn't anybody else helping me? Um, and then when you really go through extensive, that's where people really start to have really bad physical and mental uh, uh, effects of it. Uh, so I think one of the things that was really helpful to me is I think as HR pros, you can uh, see in yourself or in your peers or maybe even in your students, um, if, if you see a change in behavior or a change in an emotional state, somebody who's usually very, very happy starts becoming real callous. That might be a time you jump in. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that concept. Well, I have, um, I, I think it's, it's, I think there were, uh, I, I saw the same research and mm -hmm. I like it. Um, and I would challenge HR professionals to speak up. Yes. I think, I think, um, you know, we're in the, again, we're in the business of other people's business. Mm -hmm. And if we're not strong enough and bold enough to say, hey, what the hell are you doing? Right. You know, that's going to, and I'm, I mean, obviously, we're we're not going to openly, you know, grab them and say, "What the hell are What the hell are you doing?" But, right. Well, but it has to be pretty frank. But you have to, and you have to say, "Listen, you're, you're you know, you're not being yourself. You're mm -hmm. not being polite. You, you've moved beyond. Hey, you're hungry. Get a Snickers bar." You know, <laughs> right. 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 You know, it's it's hey, you're being a jerk. Yeah. You know, my wife is my wife has said that to me. Sure. And I got to tell you, nothing resonates. When your spouse turns and says, okay, I don't want to talk to you right now. We're done. Yeah, I would say it resonates even in some ways. And, and I hate to say that a lot of times we'll take our families for granted. We assume they should be dealing with our stuff. But when a peer says it to you, um, probably even more so than a boss, but a peer says it to you, you really, that's times where it hits me uh, as well. But I think it's important people have the courage to, to identify it. Uh, so I think one way that I would say, based on what you said, that, that you, if you can build a, a, a team that it's okay to call people out in a way that's professional, private, um, but where there's that trust, would you agree that usually makes that kind of a, a, a solution much better? I agree. And I think, I think we can't be afraid to do it. And I think, um, it, it just in today, look, the news is negative. Uh, you know, we're not we're not in a great positive. Uh, depending on 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 just everything that we see, we're bombarded. We've got a news cycle that's 24 hours. We've got Facebook that's 24 hours. We've, we've got a lot of things hitting us. We have to be bold and strong enough to say to our friends, "Hey, look, let's stop. Let's you know get away from this." Right. It's and, hard to do. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, listen, I was going to say, I was going to drop some knowledge on you to piggyback on what you've said. I just uh, saw a, a survey, 2017 survey. If you go and you Google uh, stress report, I believe it's from the American uh, Stress Institute, something along those lines. Um, maybe we'll have the FOT people put in the, in the, uh, this post, what that, this, this, a link to the survey where they said for the first time in 2017, there was a statistically significant increase in levels of overall stress year over year. And they said the primary indicator was politics. So I share that. I don't necessarily advocate for let's talk about politics in the workplace, but I do think we as HR pros need to understand that this really is becoming an exacerbating factor outside of all the things we've already talked about as far as calendar management and too much work and family pressures. We now are being bombarded in another way. Isn't that interesting? I think that's fascinating. So I think you were going to have some really eloquent quote on something. Do you remember? I was going uh, to say um, along the lines of uh, you know, fortune favors the bold. Or oh, we yes. To, we have to be bold. And we have to you know, we can't, we can't be weak about this. We have, because we have to take care of our own. Yes. You know, I mean, our coworkers, we spend more time at work than anywhere else. Yes. And I think it's, it's, um, and I, and actually it's funny, you know, I see it on the student side here. And again, I go back to that calendar. Yeah. I know when finals are coming. I know when midterms are coming. I know when papers are due because I see it in our students. I see that they're here all the time. I see that they're, um, sometimes their emails aren't very coherent. Um, I see their actions in the office when they're here for counseling career-wise. And you can see when the pressure's been rat ratcheted yeah. up. Yeah. Um, 
So um, it seems yeah. like you're piggybacking. We can piggyback really good because you've given a couple of, of things that might help solve it. So why don't we talk about a little bit of the solves? I think number one, what you've said, you know, as far as mitigating or identifying it is, you, you know the cycle. There are some cycles that are predictable in our work and in our, in our certainly in the education system. So I, I love that one. Um, one of the things that has helped for me too, but I'm, I'm not somebody who's too shy about telling folks who I trust where I'm at, is really to admit that I'm burned out. Um, that's, that's helped me um, just to say, guys, I know I just snapped at you. Let me tell you why. I don't think it's, I'm not too proud or I'm not uh, invulnerable enough to, to say, listen, I might need a little help or please have some patience and call me on my stuff if I cross a line, you know. Do you have any, any things that can help you get in front of burnout or help students get in front of burnout? Well, I think there's the traditional, you know, you should eat right, exercise. Yes, um, yes. Avoid alcohol. Avoid, mm -hmm. I mean, these are things. Um, I am a big fan of... Uh, uh, I mean, we all have wearables. Yes. And I, I really love the Stop and Breathe app. Isn't that amazing? You know, isn't that amazing? Lives. Yeah. You know, it's like, and 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 depending on your personality, it could be, oh, okay, time to stop and breathe. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, like in my brain, it's like, hey, Nicolasian, like, all right, stop. Yeah. Take Thirty seconds. Get your head together, and then. Go forward. So, I, I mean, well, that's my inner dialogue. But I, <laughs> right. Well, you know, but it's true. Uh, there are times where we have been so um, overstimulated with information um, that our, literally our breathing becomes more shallow. That's why I think it is amazing that on the Apple Watch and probably other smart watches as well, they have an, an actual breathe app. That means it's chronic. If it is a feature on a phone or, and again, well, there's tons of apps too, we got a chronic situation here, so I think that's great. So be, be, be aware of it and take care of yourself and just breathe. I, I think that's a huge. Okay, hacky sack, squeezies. Hacky sack, squeezies, I love these things too. I mean, you know, I, although you have to be careful because, like, this is a trigger in my office. My, my colleagues will see this, <laughs> and then, you know, you're bouncing a ball down the hall. Yeah. You're like, all right. What's wrong? What's wrong? So you <laughs> I learned to kind of keep this. You know, under the desk. Sure, we all have tells, but it's like, I have no poker face. So if I'm looking like this, they probably know that's what it is. Uh, I also think um, certainly having connections with people who are outside of the work environment. I, I mean, crucial, crucial, crucial. Um, so I'm going to leave the last word with you. Um, any other last tips that you have for our, our folks that have worked for you in your, in your very, I mean, you've had a, a great career and you've, you've dealt with lots of people, lots of students. So any other words of wisdom you've given people? I think um, I think it's twofold. Number one, um, as HR pros, we have to remember that when people are coming to us and asking us for help, we've got to stop and remember to help them. Yeah. I think we get a little too wound up in our our daily routines and our ourselves, um, and we have to remember that that's a big deal. That's a big ask, and I mm -hmm. I tell that to my team here that you know when a student walks in and they're completely unprepared, you know don't get don't get too hard on them. Remember why they're here. Remember why someone's asking you for help. And I also think we have a responsibility to pay attention to our colleagues in the workplace and pull them aside and call them out and take care of them and say, hey, look, I've noticed this. Are you okay? What's going on? And we cannot be afraid. We have to be bold about that. We absolutely have to. I love it. So I think the takeaway here, John, is fortune favors the bold. Fortune, fortune favors the bold, the brave. So um, friends, uh, I hope that this has been enlightening for you as it has been for us. John, thank you so much for being our guest today. For our guest today, I hope that you will come back. Um, and friends, you have been watching No Scrubs brought to you by Job Vite. And of course, Fistful of Talent. I'm Dawn Burke. And until next time, bye. Hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride Trying to holler at